Bonjour! Hello, my favorite people. Today we'll be checking out the culture, the history, all that about Azerbaijan. I decided I'm going to be bringing more cultural reactions to this channel, though I do have a whole uh, culture channel dedicated just to reacting to um, different cultures and foods and stuff around the world. But since we're in the era of Eurovision and I have a lot of people from outside of the United States watching this channel, I was like, why not do the same thing on both channels? Hello, it's just double the content, double the niches. It's a good thing. So today we're going to be checking out the 10 top most surprising facts about Azerbaijan. And I know I've been saying it right, I don't, pr I don't pronounce it right, I give it like a French pronunciation, um, Azerbaijan, possibly. Let me know how you actually pronounce it um, in the comments down below. But enough talking, let's get right into it. You guys know I've always stand you for your Eurovision content because you guys just know how to do it. I don't think I've seen a bad uh, Azerbaijan uh, performance on Eurovision, which is why I ride for you guys so much, because I can trust you. Like, I stay in the UK, but can I trust them in Eurovision? Heck no! They suck! But this year they're doing it good, but I'm getting off topic. Let's get into it. Subscribe to me if you like the video. Make sure you head over to Instagram and uh, follow me and DM me video requests over there too. But yeah, let's get into the top 10 surprising facts about Azerbaijan. Look at the baddie. In case you don't know what that means, that means she's pretty. Bad is good in America. I know it's complex. Anyway. In today's episode, we'll explore 10 interesting facts about the fascinating country of Azerbaijan. Welcome back to FTD Facts. I'm Sarah Carvalho, Sarah Carvalho, and I'm excited to get into today's video about the country of Azerbaijan, officially known as Azerbaijan. So it's literally just John. Not, I say Jean, because that's like, I like to say it that way, but it's Azerbaijan. John. Azerbaijan. Okay. Azerbaijan. As the Azerbaijani Republic, country of eastern Transcaucasia occupies an area that fringes the southern flanks of the Caucasus Mountains. Caucasus and is surrounded by Russia, the Caspian Sea, Iran, Armenia, and Georgia. Are y'all okay? Let me know if you need like cash app or any food or something because I I don't know the, the situation fully in Europe. All I know is again, Russia is invading Ukraine. But how are the other countries in the surrounding areas doing? If you're okay, let me know. If you're not okay, also let me know. I would love to help. However, I we'll can. be showcasing some pretty interesting facts today, so be sure to stay tuned in all the way down to fact number one. Let's get to it. Let's get Starting it. With fact number ten, Azerbaijan is actually quite a small country, as it is roughly the same size as its neighboring countries, Armenia and Georgia. However, it is dwarfed by Turkey, Iran, and Russia, who it also shares borders with. At 86,600 kilometers squared, Azerbaijan is roughly four times the size of Wales. All right, let's... Who? Now, we have a lot of history reacting to Wales and stuff, so that puts it in per into perspective. Now, did you say four times smaller or four times bigger? I assume bigger, right? 600 kilometers squared, Azerbaijan is roughly four times the size okay. of Wales. Yeah. So, you aren't terribly small. Now, there are, because Europe has so many different countries, then their borders are like so stacked together that a lot of the countries are pretty small. But if you're four times the size of Wales, you're not like microscopic, you know? All right, let's talk about the serious love of pancakes. Ah! Coffee or filled pancakes are practically Azerbaijan's national dish. Hey! Now, these are not your traditional pancakes. Western pancakes topped with butter, syrup, and fruit. They're actually traditionally stuffed with huh. ingredients such as pumpkin veggies, meat, or just a sprinkling of herbs, and then flipped and toasted on a griddle. We would call that a quesadilla. That's a quesadilla to me. In which a quesadilla is like uh, Mexican food, Spanish food. Hmm. But I can tell this isn't a corn tortilla or flour tortilla. This may be, I don't know what kind of bread or dough this is. Someone let me know, but something like this we would just call a tortilla, where you fold it and like grill it. Looks good though, looks like a ham and cheese inside of it. I just don't know what kind of dough or bread this is. Unfortunately, for those of you with a sweet tooth, this means you can leave your Nutella at home. Uh, Azerbaijan's pancakes, pancakes are strictly savory. For me personally, tea is never complete without milk and sugar. But have you ever considered preparing your tea with jam? No. In general, honestly, I don't even like tea. When I visited London, my family tried to put me on whenever I was visiting them. Just, it's not, it's very bitter. I really, I'm a juice person. I really love juice. So to go from juice to tea, I just, there wasn't any sweetness or flavor. It was just very bitter to the tongue. Mm. Maybe in the morning, like a cup of tea is good, but throughout the day, no, I prefer my juice or soda, you know? 
Interestingly enough, Azerbaijanis partake in this practice as part of their daily tea preparation. Daily? In fact, no social occasion is considered complete without tea, served with a myriad of trimmings. Tea is usually sweetened with jam and flavored with thyme, lemon, mint, or rose water. Furthermore, rose water? Y'all are bouge bouge. Bougie. Rose water? Oh, that's like... Hi, can I get a cup of ice, or a cup of water, light ice with a lemon, when you order that at the restaurant? But y'all are saying, let me get a cup of rose water. Bouge, you got coin. When families are matchmaking, it is believed by many that the tea tray gives a good indication of how the arrangements are progressing. Wait a minute. Okay, qu genuine question. If you're talking about decades or just eras of history, where would you say Azerbaijan is? Are y'all still like very traditional, you know, man runs the household, man works, woman is at home with the children, that kind of thing? Let me know. Y'all are arranged marriages that still happen? This is my ignorance coming. Yes, I'm American. You don't see arranged marriages here. Unless you're like in the Appalachians and it's like an incest situation. But arranged marriages where the parents pick your mate. The heck? If, if my mom tried to set me up and say, no, you have to go marry this man. What the? Whoa, that's that's wild. Woo. If the tea is served unsweetened, this means that more negotiating needs to be done. <laughs> that's crazy. The tea was not sweet enough. You're not a fit mate to marry my daughter. At least you know your dad's looking out for your taste buds, I guess. Before the arrangement can be finalized. If sweet, then one can assume that the wedding is definitely in the cards. Number seven, oh. Azerbaijan's national animal. So the Karabakh horse, renowned Karabakh. for its effortless speed, intelligence, Ooh. and endurance, is the national animal of Azerbaijan. Now that is cool. We just get a stupid eagle. We got a bird, America. We got a bird as our national animal. Y'all got a whole horse, a, a majestic horse. That's nice. I found it particularly cool to learn that they are endemic to the country and uh -huh. one of the world's oldest breeds. Now, horse meat was also once widely eaten in Azerbaijan, but has now fallen out of favor. Today, you'll most likely find lamb and beef on the menu instead. I've never had lamb. I have had beef, you know, hamburgers. Um, I would like to try lamb. I would like to try all meats, but eating a horse, that's wild. It's probably because we see horses as like pets or like farm animals, um, even a recreational exercise things. You can go horseback riding, but to eat the horse? Hey, different practices, different folks, different cultures. I'm not judging. I don't, I'm not judging at all in this video. Just a disclaimer. It's just different. Eating a horse. Where's even the meat? I feel like it's all muscle. That's tight muscle. Very tough to eat and swallow and chew. I can imagine it though in like a, um, a stew or a soup, spicy. Huh. Now I don't know about you, but this news sounds great to me as eating a horse meat would feel a little too much like taking a bite out of Black Beauty. Fact number six, how do you feel about proverbs? Well, Azerbaijanis enjoy using old proverbs to get their point across in short, simple sentences that are packed with meaning and valuable lessons. I like that. That shows intelligence. So y'all use a lot of metaphors to like show your opinions and like get your point across. That's cool. Some notable examples include cheap meat never makes a good soup. Politeness is not sold in the bazaar. What's a bazaar? The grocery store? And I tried to draw the eyebrow, but I ended up poking the eye. Now... Huh. Maybe that's like, uh, love yourself. I tried to draw the eyebrow, but just ended up poking my eye. Yeah, I take that as like, leave your face alone, leave your body alone, stop doing all this extra stuff, you're beautiful the way you are. Because one surgery, you're just gonna get another. You're gonna get another. Then all of a sudden, your butt and your thighs don't match. That's kind of unfortunate. I spent some time thinking about each of these proverbs, and I was surprised to see how many different meanings and messages I was able to come up with that relate to how like we as people navigate life. Maybe you might like to do the same, and let us know what you think they mean in the comments below. Alright guys, so before we get to our next five facts, I wanted to take a second to tell you about our newest channel. No thank you. Uh, go 
check out their channel, I guess, though. And subscribe here, too, if you haven't yet. Like the video so I know y'all want me to do more culture reactions, specifically about Azerbaijan or any European or wherever you're from. Let me know. Lies one of the most incredible settlements in the world. The settlement was originally designed to be used as an oil rig with a couple of elevated walkways. Today, it is an entire stilted, stilted city. city. It is a fully functional city of 3,000 people living in a network of oil platforms and artificial islands what? connected by 300 kilometers of elevated bridges. This what? stilted city is named Nat Daslari. That is cool. This looks like an amusement park, but it's it's the city. That, that's so smart, though. Like, if you really think about it, this is an idea that we could, because we have so many abandoned malls, so many abandoned hotels in America, so many abandoned just areas in general. We could turn those into livable spaces. That way we wouldn't have so many homeless people living in our streets. Help your own people. This is a, this is a good, instead of just letting this area go to waste, they've converted it into a city. That's really nice. Now again, I don't really know how y'all's healthcare system or if your government helps your homeless or um, underprivileged and stuff, but this is something that we could do to help our less fortunate in our country. I like this idea. It's really cool. That's awesome. Also known as Oil Rocks. It Oil lies rocks. fully within the world's largest lake at an incredible distance of 55 kilometers from the lake's shore. It Ooh. That'd be hard, though. Because, like, if you're already poor, how are you supposed to go into this main city to get groceries? Unless there's, like, a grocery shop in on the um, manufactured island. I don't know. It would take a lot of planning. It was originally built in 1949, and since then, entire communities have popped up around bakeries, shops, ah, okay. cultural areas, hostels, and hotels. Nice. You might be surprised to know that Azerbaijan is known for its strength. How do you feel about a good old arm wrestling match? It definitely sparks lose. memories of my elementary school days, but it certainly is not part of my daily routine today. That being said, if you find yourself in Baku, Azerbaijan cool. capital, you might want to limber up for an arm wrestling match. Do people actually, like foreigners, just walk up to people and be like, hey, I hear y'all are, you know, into that arm wrestling stuff. Let's try it. I feel like I get cursed out. <laughs> Shut up, you black wench. <laughs> the city is home to the Arm Wrestling Federation, who hosts arm the country's Federation. professional league. Now, that's cool. Hard. This is serious business in Baku's gyms and bars. Clearly, this sport is much more than a traditional Western lunchtime game for school age children. Fact number three don't be surprised by the funky smell. So as you've traveled through the country, you might be surprised to find that an eggy smell wafts through the air. Eggs. For this, you can blame the volcanoes. Hey, that's cool. Can you visit the volcanoes? I've never seen a volcano in real life. When I travel, I really, I just love to see the agriculture, just the city landscape. I don't really want to go actually do anything, though I do have some stuff I, on my bucket list I actually want to do, like snowboarding, um, snorkeling, I would love to do that. But when I travel, I really just like to see the city. I just want to be and see what I, where I am. I don't need to actually be doing anything. But that would be a cool like um, day, just to go trek the volcanoes. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I just spent my Monday morning on a volcano. Ooh, thank God it didn't erupt. Bucket list things, you know? Azerbaijan has more mud volcanoes than any other country on Earth. Damn! To be specific, it has more than 400 of them. Oh. When its volcanoes erupt, the flames can shoot up to a kilometer into the air. But when dormant, they bubble and pop with noxious gases. Now I'm scared. How do you even predict if a volcano is going to erupt? You know how they can like tell the weather, oh, it's going to rain Tuesday, or we're going to have a tornado, a thunderstorm. Can they like determine what? Because if I want to go explore volcanoes, I would like to not do it on a day that they're going to erupt. You know, just an idea. So I would need to have to ask an archaeologist or something, whoever studies volcanoes. It's the aroma of sulfuric eggs welcoming you in the street. Is that healthy How cool to breathe would in? would it be to float through the capital? Of course, I don't mean literally float as in floating in the air like a balloon. 
Instead, I was excited to learn that Baku is also home to Little Venice, a community built around man-made waterways that flow between shops, restaurants, and entertainment venues. Uh. The waterway has a number of islands connected by bridges and walkways. It reminds me of Dubai, like these, these big buildings. Like genuinely, I'm sorry to say, but I thought Azerbaijan was going to be kind of um, smaller cities, not like very industrialized, um, uh, how do I even, like Egypt kind of thing, like sand and um, mountains and stuff. I don't know, but y'all are like an industrialized city, basically. But the best way to get around is by gondola. Now, I don't gondola. know about you, but the thought cool. of floating around on the waterways as I complete my daily shopping sounds lovely. Your Uber is a gondola. That is iconic. Unless, of course, it's accompanied by that sulfuric, eggy smell. Then I might have to rethink that a little bit. It's a part of the experience. No judgment on your egg smell. And bringing us down to our last fact of today, bread oh, is actually sacred. a sacred food. So traditionally in Western culture, when bread grows stale, that's throw it out. to throw it out or grind it up into breadcrumbs for future recipes. However, Azerbaijani cooks don't just throw away bread. Instead, they hang it up in bags separate from the rest of the garbage to signify their respect. No judgment. I'm, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Just interesting. What genuine question? What's so special about bread? It's dough that you um, put into the oven. It bakes, and then it gets moldy after time. You throw it away. Why do they find it sacred? Let me know. Maybe because of all the time and care it takes to make the bread. Like it's very special, I guess. In fact, it is believed by many that if you drop bread on the floor, it is custom to kiss it as an apology. I mean, as a bread lover, I can definitely relate to this. There have been what? some breads that I have encountered in my lifetime that almost seem too good to eat. Okay, hold on. Is this Cap? Is she playing or is this serious? Y'all let me know. For real, if you drop bread, you gotta kiss it? Like, I'm at a restaurant. I'm a messy eater. It falls on the floor. Everybody's gonna... <gasps> Look at me. I wouldn't know what to do. Bread is sacred. It's just something you have to like put in your notepad if you ever, this is the thing about travel. Like there's different customs that you've got to like just research and know that way you don't go there and offend anybody. At least that's how I wanted whenever I want to travel. Cause Americans already do get a bad rap by the rest of the world. So you don't want to go there and like prove them right. I guess you could say. But anyways, if you guys want me to do more Azerbaijan or just cultural reactions on the channel, let me know down below. Again, DM your, your video request over on Instagram and I'll see you in the next one.